In Levin's experiments with planaria flatworms, it turns out that if you train it and then cut their heads off, the tail will regenerate a brand new brain that still remembers the original information, which poses a profoundly big question. Where the information from the brain is actually stored then? This area of research holds the keys to pretty much every deep question of life. For one thing, these creatures are similar to our ancestors. They have true symmetry. They have a true brain. They're not like earthworms. They're a much more advanced life form and most importantly, planaria is immortal. There's no such thing as an old planaria. Levin found that genomes encode the proteins in cells, but not the body's anatomy or its regeneration. For instance, while stem cells have the potential to create the basic components of organs, it's currently impossible to manipulate individual cells to form complex structures, such as a functional human hand or eye. Using just bioelectricity codes, he achieved a completely different look from the default anatomy, without genomic changes. He believes that to fully unlock such potential, we need to shift focus from cellular hardware to biological software, which enables networks of cells to acquire, store, and act on information about organ and whole body geometry. In the computer world, shifting from rewiring hardware to reprogramming information flow revolutionized the IT industry. Similarly, biology could achieve futuristic visions of regeneration by shifting its focus to physiological software concepts. Planarian flatworms are a prime example, as they can regrow any part of their body until the correct anatomy is complete, after which growth stops. The big mystery is how the system identifies the correct target shape, orchestrates individual cell behaviors to achieve it, and determines when the job is done. It's important to note that not only nerve and muscle cells, but almost all cells in the body can participate in electrical communication. This is due to protein structures within cell membranes that transport various ions in and out of cells. The thing about these ion channels is that they have gap junctions, and that many of them are themselves voltage sensitive. A gap junction is something basically like a little tunnel that connects cells. According to Dr. Werner Lowenstein, the scientist who first proposed their existence, the single cell is not the fundamental building block of living organisms. Instead, it is the double cell connected by a gap junction that represents the true primary element. It is crucial to understand that gap junctions are not an unusual or infrequent occurrence. In fact, they are so prevalent that we can describe them as a universal characteristic of all living organisms on our planet. It means that it should have a deep evolutionary history. And in their joint peer-reviewed paper, two experimental physicists from the Department of Plasma Physics Complexity Science Group proposed a hypothesis that these bioelectronic circuits, the junction systems, are in fact a result of evolution initiated under the prebiotic Earth conditions by a simple spark. Spark that occurred in a medium, presumed to be a chemically reactive plasma, allowing it to evolve from the complex ball lightning systems into the contemporary cell. They wrote, quote, As revealed by nature, the creation of a living cell requires the self-assembly of a framework in the form of the cell membrane mainly constituted of lipids and proteins. The most important parts of this framework are the channels that, by a specific electric activity, control the matter and energy exchange between the nucleus of the cell and the surrounding medium. Why this gradient appears and acts is today a challenging problem of biology. An alternative explanation could be based on a self-organization mechanism. Such a mechanism becomes possible if a biological cell is the result of the evolution of a gaseous cell, formed by a cascading self-organization scenario. In that case, the membrane of the cell must contain, in order to ensure its viability, channels able to maintain a local gradient of different ion species. This could be possible if at the ends of the channels, microball lightning are situated with qualities remembering their recent history. This means that the micro-ball lightning preserves its initial ability to sustain and control an anomalous transport of matter and energy through the channel by the described dynamics. 
It has obtained this ability during its creation under prebiotic Earth conditions. As mentioned, the complex space charge configuration created in plasma by self-organization also reveals other interesting phenomena such as self-multiplication by division and exchange of information. End of quote. This scenario of self-organization shows striking similarities to those of living matter. And it could explain the emergence of primitive organisms from inorganic matter. Hence, paved the way for their evolution into contemporary cells. In their following peer-reviewed paper, they wrote, quote, Under such premises, the emerged electric skeleton, the spherical structure of elementary dipoles that border the minuscule ball of fire, potentially acts as a mold on which proteins and protein assemblies attach. Once emerged, their dynamic is governed by quantum mechanical forces. Playing functional roles at mesoscopic scales, the dipoles perform operations that remind that of living biological cells. End of quote. Their innovative idea that ionic channels have the microball lightning at the ends that make up the gap junctions correlates with the experiments of low-energy nuclear reactions and isotope transmutation in living systems. Now, it should be noted that in their paper, instead of using the term microball lightning, they employed the phrases micro double layers or complex space charge configuration. Essentially, these terms refer to the same phenomenon known as plasmoids, balls of fire, microball lightning, itonic clusters, or exotic vacuum objects. Interestingly, all of these phenomena enable nuclear transmutation of elements. It's like a modern-day scientific version of alchemy, where atoms of one element can be magically transformed into atoms of another element through nuclear reactions. Transmutation in biological systems involves efficiently replenishing missing elements for growth. When essential elements are lacking, biological objects instantly capture synthesized elements through transmutation to sustain growth. In their joint peer-reviewed paper, Vladimir Vysotsky and Ala Kornilova wrote, the physical prerequisites of the transmutation process are related to the general issues of implementing low-energy nuclear reactions. In our opinion, supported by calculations and multiple comparisons with successful experiments, this mechanism is associated with the formation of coherent correlated states, which are formed and transformed in the growth zone of biological objects. For example, in the cell division area during DNA replication on the surface of biological membranes. In fact, under certain conditions, each such object in the presence of suitable atoms or ions can act as a single-use micro-reactor for nuclear fusion. Based on such a mechanism, it is evident that the phenomenon traditionally referred to as biological transmutation is, in fact, ordinary nuclear fusion, the conditions for its realization being provided through natural processes automatically occurring in the growth zone of biological objects. A crucial point is that such reactions do not lead to the formation of radioactive nuclei which fundamentally sets them apart from reactions realized through genuinely accelerated particles. End of quote. These results are now experimental facts and the basis of patented cutting-edge technology. Therefore, the gap junctions serve not only as ion channels, but with the help of bioplasmoids that are sitting at the ends of these channels, congregate in vast quantities to form massive hexagonal arrays of nuclear fission microreactors along sheets of cell membrane. They also serve as a standardized kit assembly system in nature between living cells and construct communication channels thus are directly responsible for the long-range order and the fundamentals of life. Another cool thing is that a voltage-sensitive current conductance it has, that's a transistor. Now, living matter gets access to all of the neat stuff that transistors do. A transistor is an electronic component used to amplify and switch electronic signals. They are essential building blocks of modern electronic devices, such as computers, smartphones, and amplifiers. As a result, two cells with identical genes and membrane proteins can have very different electrical properties. So now, when you have a network of cells, 
Not only do they talk to each other, but they can send messages to each other and the difference in voltage can propagate. This is possible because of the presence of solid-state-like semiconductors in living matter, allowing electrons to travel long distances without losing energy, because in a semiconductor, the electron energy is preserved and passed on as information. Dr. Levin discovered that bioelectrical signals trigger complex chains of events. He also found that the genome doesn't encode instructions for organ placement, but rather encodes hardware that reduces the difference between current and target anatomy. This was a groundbreaking discovery, as he found that anatomy can be rewritten by bioelectrical stimuli and maintained indefinitely without genomic editing. For example, Levin's tail and head experiments showed that bioelectrical signals influenced the growth and identity of body parts. Bioelectric cues could not only determine where a new structure grew, but also what the new structure will be. For instance, altering ion channel or gap junction activity can trigger the bioelectric circuit that regulates head number and location in regenerating planaria, resulting in a species with two heads or two tails. Researchers can visualize voltages in groups of cells using fluorescent dyes that now very much remind electrons and energy levels, which are known as Briouin zones. But most importantly, the body's bioelectric represents a new layer of information stored outside DNA. This is a biology software. And this new emerging field highlights the hardware-software distinction embraced by computer scientists but resisted by biologists. Therefore, in molecular biomedicine, the focus remains largely on manipulating cellular hardware, such as proteins, rather than exploiting the reprogrammability of life. Can this explain some exotic phenomena, such as miracles of healing reported in various historical accounts? If what we see is a gateway via some plasma-based interface discovered by COPE to the biological software that determines the work to be performed and controls operation of the genome hardware, this might explain how such things might work on this level. One can literally hack and patch the codes of bioplasmatic and bioelectric systems of any malfunctioning organ or tissue and force it to return to its healthy state. Genome hardware will follow providing all the organic material needed. And as experiments showed, such a fix will be permanent. This also enables us to start understanding the human interface that serves as our connection to the UFO UAP phenomenon. The concept of bioelectrical software assumes that there must be vulnerabilities that can be exploited. The recently declassified Australian Intelligence Service X-Files contain a fascinating section about individuals who were paralyzed but conscious during close encounters with the UAP phenomenon. Some information suggests that there were three so-called weapon systems. One was a device to interfere with electrical circuits, and the second was a device to induce paralysis that was able to intercept control of the body, very similar to a man-in-the-middle cyber attack. Quote, Such a handheld device, variously described as a small metal tube or flashlight, and in one case as a 60 centimeter long, 10 centimeter diameter tube. It is usually pointed at the victim, and sometimes a light is seen emanating from it, but often no light is reported. Operating distance, probably up to 10 meters. Victim is given a charge by one operation. End of quote. Is the level that the anomalous phenomena come into contact with human hardware bioplasmatic and bioelectric then? 